So now, unilateral face and arm. This one, you, you'll say is, oh, this is kind of weird because it's going to affect the face, the upper torso, and the arm. This is it. That's the only place the damage can be. And if you take the time to walk through and look at this, you realize, oh yeah, it makes perfect sense. If the damage were down here, this we could extend a little bit this way, but if the damage were down here, we'd affect the leg. If it was down here, we'd affect everything. Does that make sense? Once you learn how to read this, it all starts to fall into place. I will be posting these tonight. Brachial monophoresis, one arm. Brachial uh, cural monophoresis, one leg, one arm. Typically, two problems. One is a very discreet lesion or tumor in the brain. You affect only the arm region of the um, homunculus. The other is you affect the nerves after they leave the cervical enlargement. That's it. Anywhere else in here is going to affect other areas. Peripheral nerve damage, injury or diabetic neuropathy, motor cortex, bleed tumor and abscess. Bang. All right, one leg. One leg, in many respects, very similar. Unilateral damage to the cord on one side. So this can be anywhere from below the cervical enlargement to the um, lumbar enlargement. And it's going to affect the leg on that one side. Or a discrete problem, the motor cortex. Facial weakness here. Facial weakness is a tough one. So we got Bell's palsy, trauma, a bleed in the pons, or even in the medulla adjacent to the pons. <clears throat> What's happening here is that you are knocking out all of the signal coming out of the pons. If you have this signal coming down to here, it's not getting through. Does this make sense? Do you follow that? So you could consider this to be peripheral. Are we okay with that? This type of facial weakness is, is kind of unusual. Internal capsule hemorrhage and tumor, motor cortex hemorrhage and tumor. Either or, you're not going to have both of these. Typically, you're going to have one or the other. Having both of these would be like being struck in the head twice with lightning. Okay? So, the way these fiber tracks pass through the capsule is very well organized. The arm comes through the middle, the face goes internal, the leg goes external in the capsule. So if you have this very discreet tumor bleed, you can affect only the face. But now once again, the upper face is spared because you got a signal coming from the other side. Same thing here, discrete tumor, discrete bleed, discrete trauma can damage this spot, just knocking out the lower face. <clears throat> Brachial diaphoresis. This one is, is kind of odd. Um, there are a lot, of, a lot of subsets within here. This is going to involve central discrete 
central core damage in the area below the pyramid and at, so it starts below the pyramid, reaching down to kind of the inferior aspect of the cervical enlargement. So the only thing you end up damaging are the signals coming to both arms. So this is, this is now bilateral. Central cord syndrome. This is, we were talking about central cord syndrome earlier. Anterior cord syndrome, both of those. Bilateral carpal tunnel. So once again, that would not necessarily, and that, by the way, carpal tunnel, we think of just the wrist, but it can involve um, superior to the wrists as well. And disc herniation. Ooh, disc herniation. Would that be far lateral left? Which one? Central. Central. Why? Bilateral. It's bilateral. Yeah. So there you go. Oh, there's more. There's more. Oh, look, it gets more exciting. Paraparesis here. Okay? Both legs. Bilateral medial frontal area. Why is it, why can this be bilateral but none of the other ones be a bilateral? Because they're right next to each other. Exactly, no, that, as silly as that sounds, that's the right answer. So you can have a bleed that affects both of those and affects both legs. You can have cord damage below the, below the cervical enlargement that will affect both legs. Anywhere in here to where the signal is leaving. The, uh, the cauda equina syndrome here is, is affecting the signal going out. Guillain-Barre can affect this. So there are a lot of things. We're going to be revisiting Guillain-Barre several times this and finally, you know, so here we are now. We have quadriparesis. Typical cause for, for being a quadriplegic or having quadriparesis would be in the neck region. So, you know, we, we can have all sorts of issues up here. These signals are not going to get out with problems up here. Um, peripheral nerve and muscle is quite unusual. You could have something similar here. You know, the building is on fire, you're on the fifth floor, you got a choice. Burn with the building or jump out the window and take your chances. I think a lot of people jump. And you can land on all fours and you can damage all four. There, there are a lot of weird, bizarre things. Okay? So we have a lot of issues. You should walk through these. You should read the text that goes along with them. This is, the, okay, what we just went through here is going to take you two or three attempts to work at. Number one, I would draw out um, the cord. All right? I would, I don't care, you know, I'm, these are going to go up tomorrow or later today. No, not today. Tomorrow. And blow one up, trace over it, draw it, you know, fairly large. And what you can actually do is you can take a straight edge and come up to it and say, okay, I do this. What's my outcome? I do this. What's my outcome? I do this, what's the outcome? I do this, et cetera, et cetera, okay? By doing that, it allows you to have quite a bit of control over how you look at it. And then you have to think about, okay, as a, as a clinician, are you gonna see the damage or the loss of function? Loss, loss of function. So what you have to start doing is saying, okay, if I have a patient like this, 
how can that happen? If I have a patient that has a cervical cord hemorrhage, what's likely to be the problem? Oh, oh. What? Mars. Cervical cord could knock the whole thing out. Remember, we're, we're now, now in the neck region. The minute we say cervical cord, we're talking kind of, well, this whole area through here. So it can be below the decussation, but including the cervical enlargement. Cervical enlargement is in the cervical cord. The minute we affect the cervical enlargement, all hell breaks loose. So when you see three, like, red, like this, does it mean, like? Means all of it? Or we have not, no, never, never, ever, ever. Don't ever, don't ever make that. Don't ever do that. Never. This, we could have a problem up here. Once again, these are adjacent areas served by similar blood flow. But how could I lose all of that? Trauma. Trauma would do it. Gunshot, boom. Going through the you know, upper part of the head, you survive that one. Okay? If it's not, if it's not at your temple, if it's through up here, you're a survivor. You have extreme deficits, but your, your midbrain and brainstem are intact. You're probably going to make it. You're going to lose all of that. So, breaking your neck. Same thing. I'm going to do that. The, once again, the multiple peripheral nerve issues are, are pretty unusual. I, wouldn't, I, would, I would never expect you to go to that conclusion. I think you should concentrate on this or that. Whenever you see multiple areas, um, this or this, OK? There's two. This or that. This or that. It's not saying both of those happen. It's saying one or, that. The, one or the other. Could you have both? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> you know, but let's not get too obnoxious. All right. Want to look at exams? Yeah. No? I yes. Um, for the last slide in the lumbar core, it so you can still have a synapse? The, the that one's one I'm asking because it's red, or not red, there. Okay. Did you still have a synapse what, what, what you have to remember is they're trying to show you three scenarios. Okay. I, they're yeah. showing you that scenario, this scenario, and this scenario. Okay. They're three separate issues. So. It's, once again, to save a page of printing and crammed it all together. Um, technically, the minute you knock this out here, this is gone. That's what I think. It's going to be gone. Yeah. But what they're trying to show you is where the damage can be. Okay. Yeah. So you, you, to have all of this happen, you can't have just damage through here. It can't, it can't be. So the damage, to get this scenario, the damage can't be in here. Regardless of how it happens, it can't be in here. It's kind of interesting though, the sacral, uh, sacral cord, it damaged that part. I, why is like... No, sacral, of, yeah. sacral cord down here? Yeah. I mean, it's, on the side. I mean, the, uh, the, uh, yeah, the, the cord. The legs? Yeah. Shouldn't it just affect only the legs though? But why? No. Peripheral nerve oh, damage okay. would have to affect oh, yeah. so, four things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could, in theory, have extreme diabetic neuropathy. Okay, you, I mean you are mongo diabetic. You you got, you know, your blood is sweet. Vampires refuse it. It's too sugary, you know, and yeah. Mm -hmm. So you could have issues. I I can't off the top of my head think of one. But you could. That's what he's showing you. All right. Um, I need these back.